Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Inna alhamdulillah Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن ولا وبعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها الإخوة الكرام وأخوات السيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear respected brothers and sisters The ayat which were read to you, they contain some specific advice and led you to some particular characteristics which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the people who followed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the very beginning of this deen. These were the pieces of advice that prepared these people, that took these people from the dhulamat ila nur that took these people from the jahiliyyah ila al-islam they took them from su' ila al-khair that took them from being criminals to being muhsineen Over a period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this advice, gave them these commandments. And put in their midst the best of the human beings. So if they wanted to know what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean by this or that? They only had to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an ayah, they never tried to figure it out on their own. As when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked one day, Mu'adh ibn Jabal was riding on the camel of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very close to him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Ya Mu'adh, hal tadri haqqullahu ala al-ibad? O oh, Mu'adh, do you know what is the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his ibad 
his servants, and Mu'adh is very close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he could have answered this question because he was a man of taqwa and iman. But his answer to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was Allahu wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Because the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they were asked such a question, they never thought to themselves they could answer this question better than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they always returned it back to him to see what he would say. He told him, the haqq of Allah upon his ibad, la tushriku billahi shay'a, that they do not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him another question. He said, Ya Mu'adh, Hal Tadri, Haq al Ibad ala Allah. O oh, Mu'adh, do you know what is the Haq of the servants upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Mu'adh, he answered again, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger he knows best. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again he rode a little further to let him think. And then after that he says, "Idha fa'alu Allah la yu'adhibuhum." If they do this, meaning la tushriku billahi shay'a, Allah will not punish them. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best, the best of my ummah, the best, the best of my nation, the best of my nation, meaning the cream, the cream of my nation, whom if you follow them, there's no doubt about what they understood, no doubt about what they practiced, no doubt about what they saw, no doubt about their commitment. He said, who are they? Qarni. Qarni, my generation. Thumma yalunahum. Thumma yalunahum. Then he stopped. And in another riwayah he mentioned, and after them there will come another people a different people upon them there will be some doubt they will do some things they was not ordered to do and some things they was ordered to do they would not do this comes in another rewire but about those three generations the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the tabi'in and the atba tabi'in those men and women who were around, who surrounded, who supported, who followed, who listened, who obeyed, who loved, who sacrificed for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were the strangers. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, this religion, it began as a stranger. Sayyaudu li gharibaan fatuba li ghurabaa fatuba li ghurabaa 
فتوب لغرباء The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this religion, this deen, in the beginning it came as a stranger. And it will return again as a stranger. So welcome. Glad tidings to the strangers. We are the strangers. The deen was strange. Even the language was strange, although it was the language of the Arabs. But they didn't know when the Quran said, قَدْ عَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا They didn't know what that meant, even though they were Arabs. How is the Quran using, how is he saying that kind of word? They were Arabs, but they never heard it like that. They knew the word zakah, but they didn't know it like that. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا طَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا They had not heard that before. Even Umar ibn Khattab, who was a very great poet, he didn't know what that meant. He was asking others, what's he saying? How is he saying that? Where is he getting that? Because the language which Allah sent to him, it was strange. Because this was kalamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not kalamun nas. Kalamullah. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was well known to his people, he was known, Al-Ameen, Sadiq al-Masduq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They knew he was Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and they knew he was Al-Ameen, and they knew that he was truthful. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a prophet and a messenger and commissioned him with this Qur'an and ordered them to follow him and to listen to this word and to give up the idols and to obey Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they thought he was saying something strange. And he said to them by their names, O oh, Quraysh, you know me. If I told you there was a army behind this mountain coming here to destroy you, would you believe me? They said, yes, we will believe you. Then I'm telling you that I'm the messenger of Allah and you have the obligation to obey me. Their response was that still. He's saying something strange. And so the Prophet وسلم, who was respected, who was trusted, who was loved, who was known by his people, even his uncles, that day he became a stranger. And so those people who followed his message after him, one by one, they also, they were known. Whether they were slave or whether they were free, whether they were rich or they were poor, or they were black or white or Arab or non-Arab, they were known. Everyone knew them. But one by one, as they chose to follow the Prophet wasallam, they too became strangers. No one 
was more respected in Mecca than Abu Bakr and the Siddiq after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Everyone knew him. But he too became a stranger. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, the patriot, the patriot among the Arabs, among the Quraysh, the man who was willing to kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just because of his feeling of qawmiya. He was willing. But on that day that he went to kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he too became a stranger. That very day. And we go on to those strangers. These are the people that we Muslims, we strangers today, we have to connect ourselves to those strangers. We have to connect our children to those strangers. Because it is these strangers that establish this deen. They are the ones who forged the path for this deen. They are the ones who made the sacrifice for this deen. They are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's speaking about when He says, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ لا نفرق بين أحد من الرسل وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسأها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت and they said, Rabbana, la tu akhidna in nasina au akhta'ana. Up to the end of the ayah. These are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking about. And in Surah Al-Bayyina, these was the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْدِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ These are the people رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن ذلك لمن خشي رب These strangers And we Muslims, because we are reading the newspaper, because we are educated, because we are living in the West, because we are Arab, or Pakistani, or Somali, or Sudani, or Algeri, or Muraki, because we Muslims have our own roots. We have our own families, our own love. Because we watch the television and the cinema and we go to school and our neighbors and we live in the West, Australia or UK or America. We develop a love, a following, a feeling, a support for another group of people and they're not the strangers. They are the strangers to the deen. They are not the strangers of the deen. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are three characteristics. Whosoever has them, has tasted halawatul iman. Halawatul iman. The first is that a person loves Allah and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mimma siwa huma. That he loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than they love 
anyone else besides them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned to us after a special incident took place. He says, you will not find those who believe in Allah in the last day loving those who disbelieve, even if it be their fathers or their sons or their nearest of kin. So what is the asbab and nuzul of this ayah? One day, the son of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu an, he came to his father after he became a Muslim and he said to him, Oh father, I saw you on the battlefield and I could have killed you. But because of my love and my respect for you, I could not do it. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he said to his son, Oh my son, wallahi, I never saw you. But if I had seen you, I would have killed you very easily. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because at that time you were among the kuffar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this ayah because of the love which Abu Bakr, he showed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the difference. Today, many Muslims here, you have relatives who are selling haram, doing haram, who live in your house and don't pray. And you don't care. And you say, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, kif halik habibi. <laughs> and you drink coffee with them and smile with them and smoke hubbly bubbly with them. And listen to music and play dominoes with them. And you pass by them and greet them as you greet anyone else. And you don't give them any nasiha. This is because you don't have the love in your heart for Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as the Prophet mentioned about this first quality of iman. Because if we love Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and someone lives in our house and, and they don't pray and they're Muslims every single day, we will argue with them. We will talk to them. Even we will be very rough with them. If they are our son, we will grab him. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when your son reaches the age of seven, make him pray. And when he's 10, if he's lazy, you beat him a little bit. Smack him up a little bit. Yes, because that amount of admonition would bring fear of his father. So if he have fear of his father, maybe by the time he's 13, 14, 15, he will develop a fear of Allah. But if he doesn't fear Allah when he's 10, he doesn't know. And he don't fear his father either. Chances are when he's 13, 14, 15, he's big enough now if his father grab him, he will fight with his father. Because now he doesn't fear Allah more. And now he doesn't fear his father. And so what has happened to the Shabab al-Muslim? They are living with their fathers and they're selling alcohol. They're selling drugs. And their fathers are accepting the money from their sons because they can't say nothing because they also lost their iman so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa taqullah inna allah khabirun bima ta'malun wa la takunu kal ladhina nasu allah fa ansahum anfusahum ulaika humul فاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون and the ayah goes on لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصديا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نذربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون so he warned us Subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear Allah and look towards when you send forward for yourselves on tomorrow, that's your sons. 
That's your daughters. You sent them. And they come back. And they forgot about Allah. And you forgot about Allah. You didn't forget his name. And they did not forget his name. They know Allah. They will say Allah. And you will say Allah. But you forgot the ahkam of Allah. And they forgot the ahkam of Allah. And because they forgot the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah caused them to forget their own legacy, their own identity, their own deen. And so they become trash. And you know, you see the trash all over this city. Muslim trash. Muslim trash. They are Muslims. Still there is a flame of Islam inside of them. But they are sleeping, eating in the trash. And they are bringing the trash back home with them. You know who they are. And if there are some of them here today, Alhamdulillah, better for you to be here than anywhere else. And the Prophet ﷺ said to one of his companions, he says, Ittaqillah haythu ma kuntum. What be a sayya bil hasana tam huha wa khalikin nas bi khulukin hasanin. So if you did something wrong, follow up a bad deed with a good one. That will wipe it out. And after that, have good behavior. In the case of doing haram, in the case of doing kabair, you have to make tawbah. In the case of doing sagair, the small one, then you have to do some good action like sadaqah, fasting. So, O oh Muslims, these strangers, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Mus'ab ibn Umair, radiyallahu anhum. Salman al-Farisi, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Bilal ibn Rabah, Abdullah ibn Umar, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Suhaib ibn Sinan, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. These are the names we should teach our children. They should be the heroes of our children, not Michael Jordan. Not Michael Jackson. Not the football players. Or the basketball players. Or the musicians which they are listening to every day. Al Miqdad ibn Amr. Saeed ibn Amr. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, Ammar ibn Yasir, Ubaidah ibn al-Samit. Subhanallah. If you and I took the time to read about just 50 of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tabi'in wa sahabiyat or the Umm al mumineen just read about them and we learned just one line or two about each one of them and we shut the television off for two or three hours a day and in place of that we just play a tape about them every day and we give to our children the best food and we give them some money and put it on the table put the money and the food or a nice gift on the table and tell them after you finish listening to this take that money and eat that food and I have some more gift and I will give you something every day do that for them for about 90 days that money you will spend for them and that good food that best food you will give them and that gift you will give them is an investment because now they will listen. But after 90 days, your children, mashallah, they will have a reference in their minds. But if you don't make that investment, and if you have not made that investment, I will guarantee you something. Someone else has given them some gifts. 
and someone else has offered them some food and someone else will offer them a lot of money for some other heroes we have to make the investment in the strangers Uthman ibn Mad'oom Zayd ibn Haritha Ja'far ibn Abi Talib look at these people tell your sons about Usama ibn Zayd that 16 year old boy who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said there was none better than him except his father and so he appointed him as the Amir of the Jaysh al-Muslimin while Abu Bakr was living and Umar was living and Uthman was living and Ali ibn Abi Talib was living and other companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that was twice and three times his age but the Prophet ﷺ took that young boy and made him the commander of the Muslim army because he said there was none other better for that job except his father. And who was his father? Zayd ibn Harith, who had memorized the Quran directly from the Prophet. ﷺ. We need to tell who is. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib the commander of the first Muhajirun those that went to Habash the Prophet ﷺ handpicked him and sent him with those people to be their commander, their Amir and it was Ja'far who spoke to the, to the Najashi and touch his heart and later on it was Ja'far who convinced him to become a Muslim the king of a country and we know he became a Muslim because when he died and the Prophet Sallallahu found out that he had died the Prophet stood up Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he made Salatul Janazah for him O Muslims Khalid ibn Walid Qais ibn Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah, Umair ibn Wahab, Abu Dardai, Talha ibn Ubaidullah. Tell them about Abu Dhar al Ghifari. Abu Dhar, that man the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abu Dhar will walk alone. And Abu Dhar will die alone. And Abu Dhar will be raised up on the day of judgment alone. Not because he did something wrong, but because Allah distinguished him that way. Abu Dhar, who is from some of the worst of the criminals, who used to lay and wait for people on the paths in different places to rob them. Who was known, and his people was known, but yet when Abu Dhar became a Muslim, he was the person, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the minds of the believer, he said the believers, they are like minds of gold and silver. The best of them in the Jahiliyyah, they will become the best of them in the day of Islam, if they believe, if they believe. And look at Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar, when he became a Muslim, he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Wallahi, I go today to the haram and I will tell them, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah and I don't care. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't do that, they will beat you. He said, I will do it. And Abu Dhar, he went to the haram and he faced them and he told them by their names, I am Abu Dhar. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah who don't who doesn't like it and they jumped on him and they beat him until they knocked him out and when he became conscious again he stood up and he said it again to them and they beat him and knocked him out and he continued to do that until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered Abu Dhar
to leave Mecca because he knew they would kill him. And Abu Dhar, he left. And the next time that Abu Dhar came back, he came back with his entire tribe. All of them saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Abu Dhar. And we Muslims, some of us, we are Muslims for 20 years. We're born Muslims. And we are 50 years old today, 60 years old. And we have not given one shahada where we live. We did not give one. Because we say, my family is Muslim. My father is Muslim. My grandfather Muslim. My great-grandfather Muslim. MashaAllah. But you don't say to the kafir who you work with, and you don't say to the kafir you go to school with, and you don't say to the kafir who enters, your non-Muslim who enters your store you do business with, you don't say to your neighbor who is a non-Muslim, you don't say what Abu Dhar said, you don't say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You don't share the treasure of Islam. My brothers and sisters in Islam, The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the three things whosoever have them have tasted the sweetness of faith one Allah a person loves Allah and his messenger more than all else secondly he loves a person only for the sake of Allah he loves a person for the sake of Allah, not because he is my countryman, not because he is my family, not because I know him very well, not because I hang out in the street with him, not because we watch television together or we do business together. No, you love a person only because for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you hate a person for what? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third characteristic is that you hate going back to kufr as you would hate being driven into a fire. So when a Muslim, he thinks of the act of kufr because here it doesn't mean to become a kafir. It means to do an act of kufr. So when the act of kufr, you, when you think of it, you think to yourself, that the fire is next to you and someone is pushing you into it, then you know you have Iman. But if the idea of fawahish comes to your mind and nothing happens inside of you, you don't have it. If you lie to earn some money, the Prophet ﷺ never lied to earn some money. If you're willing to steal something from a kafir simply because he's kafir anyway, you don't have it because the Prophet ﷺ never stole from the kafir. Because if it was legitimate for the Prophet ﷺ to steal from the kafir, he would have took that money which he had in his house that he was holding for the Quraysh. There was people from the Quraysh who had gave the Prophet ﷺ money trust and even they were hating him his message and even though they were fighting him against his message and even though they were killing and torturing his followers and even though they had plotted to come to his house and kill him not one time did they come to him and say give me back my money he was holding the money for them and the reason that he left Ali ibn Talib ibn Abi Talib in his bed when they came is so that Ali radiallahu an could give them the money that he was holding which belonged to them. So if it was lawful for the Prophet ﷺ to take some money from the Kafir because they were Kafirs, that was a good time to take it. But he did not because he was Al-Amin. O oh, Muslims, 
We must be willing and courageous to be strangers. Being a stranger will result in change. People will change simply because you begin to practice, you begin to pronounce, you begin to establish yourself around them as a Muslim. You see, if you go work for some Kafirs and your name is Abdul Rabb, and you tell them my name is Robbie, you open a store, your name is Harith, and you say my name is Harry. Because you want to have good relationship with them. Then one day you wake up and you tell them, no, 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 my name is not really Harry. My name is my name is Harith. My name is, in fact, my name, full name, Muhammad Al Harith. So don't call me Harry no more. No, we will call you Harry. We don't care. Otherwise, we go to another store. You say, go to another store then. So you don't care because you wake up and you want to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to respect this deen. So there will be a change in their attitude. If you work with the non-Muslims and because you don't really want to disturb them, you don't want to create no problems with them, you don't pray Dhuhr, you don't pray Asr, you don't pray Jum'ah, because you don't want to create no problems with them. And so they will respect you. They say, Muhammad, he's a moderate Muslim. I don't see why the rest of the Muslims are not like Muhammad. The others is extreme. They, they grow their beard long. They wear these clothes. And they got to go on a Friday. And they got to be praying on the job. They, these extremists. But Muhammad, he's a good guy. He don't do that. He's very moderate. That's why we like him. So one day Muhammad, he wake up. So 12.30, everybody go for lunch. They say, Muhammad, come, we're going downstairs for lunch. Muhammad said, no, that's okay. I'm going upstairs to pray. They said, what? What's, what's going on with you, Muhammad? <laughs> and Friday comes. And Muhammad, he leaves at 11. They say, where are you going? I'm going to Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal dhina amanu idha nudi alis salati man yawm al-Jum'ah fas'au ila dhikrullah. And he translated to them. If you want to fire me, you fire me. If you want me to, I work night shift. I work midnight shift. I work holidays. I work Saturday. I work Sunday. I work double shift. I work any time. But Jum'ah, Allah's time. See you. They said, what happened to Muhammad? A couple of months later, Muhammad, he got the full beard. Now Muhammad got a lihya. I said, Muhammad, what happened to you? You're looking like uh, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> You're looking like these uh, Qaeda guys. What's going on with you, Muhammad? You could become extremist. Muhammad said, no, I did not become extremist, and I don't belong to any group like that. This is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Maybe they will respect Muhammad even more. But Muhammad, until he does that, he doesn't realize it. He's thinking that if he just go along with them, maybe they will like him. No, they won't. They will never be satisfied with you, Muhammad, Ahmed, anyone, until you leave your deen. And even if you leave your deen, they still will not be satisfied with you. They will still say to you, yeah, I know you change your religion and you this and that, but you're still a Muslim. They still will not respect you. So therefore, the only respect we should look for is the respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will lose some money. You will lose some association. You will lose some people. And even some of your family members 
will start telling you, why are you dressing like that? Why are you getting up early in the morning disturbing us? <laughs> yes, I, live in, I lived in Egypt, and I was in a house. And I got up 4.30 in the morning. I heard the other, and I got up, and I went out. And I came back. They told me, why are you, what you doing? Why are you getting up that early? I said, the masjid, I heard the other. They said, you can pray here. I said, no. But I understand I should go and pray in Jamaa. They said, you don't have to be extreme. I'm in Egypt. If that's the case in Egypt, then what about the Muslims here? I'm praying in Mecca. In Mecca. At a very big mosque. Masjid Malik Fahad. Big mosque. Four times this size. Across the street from the people that hold the key for the Kaaba. I forget the name of that tribe. They hold, they're the holders of the keys for the Kaaba. And the king, when he wants to wash the Kaaba, he has to come to that person's house as a ceremony. Pick up the key, go to the Kaaba, open it. Those people who hold the key for the Kaaba, I never saw them at Fajr prayer ever. One day I saw him, the brother introduced me to him, he's washing his car. And I said to him, I'm very glad to meet you because I know your family have a big history. But I want to ask you a question. Yesterday, were you here for Fajr? He asked me, why you ask me that? Because your house is across the street from this masjid. And if you were here for Fajr, why well, you pray in your house and you don't come to the masjid? He told me, that's not your business. I said, probably it's not my business because you're holding a very big key. And this is what it is. We, when we become big people, we have big money, we got big name, we got big friends, we got big house, we got big family, we get also got big kibriya. And we don't have to come to the masjid then, you see. We can just stay home. No, oh Muslims, we must be willing and courageous to be a stranger because those who are in the masjid for Fajr in the morning and those who pray and leave their houses for, for Isha at night to get the benefit of the 27 Ajr, they are strangers too. We must be willing to be strangers. And when we become strangers, it's going to affect our livelihood. It will cause people to misunderstand you. It will make you sometimes even doubt yourself. Why I lose my friends? How come my wife, she want a divorce? Because she's telling me I'm becoming extreme. Or in the case of the sister, she doesn't cover herself. She's wearing lipstick in the street. She putting perfume on. She's working among the kuffar. And her husband is like her. And one day she wake up and she puts on niqab. And she puts her full clothes on. No more lipstick. No more perfume. She doesn't talk to the men. She's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher to keep herself. She stays home and take care of her home and her husband says, what happened to you? She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran. I read the hadith from the Prophet wasallam, and it made me cry to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah, if he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. To give her someone else who is also a stranger. Because strangers belong with strangers. It will challenge your iman. 
it will challenge your commitment. The issue of Dean came to distinguish father from son. The issue of Dean came to distinguish mother from daughter. The Dean came to separate individuals from the family, to separate families from the tribe, and to separate the tribe from the nation on the basis of what? Dean. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiyin uddu alayhim bin nawajid Hold on to them with what? Not your front teeth, the back teeth, your molars. Belief, commitment, sacrifice, knowledge, obedience, fear of Allah, consistency, courage, steadfastness, loyalty, respect, love for each other, brotherhood, discipline, patience, support, cooperation. These are the characteristics of the strangers. If we listen to the ayats which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them, all of these ayats was calling them to these characteristics. Iman. Sacrifice. Wa tujahiduna fi sabilillah bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Knowledge. Yarfa illahu alladhina amanu minkum. Walladhina utul ilmu darajat. Wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir Obedience Wa ma atakum Allah Ati Allah wa ati al-Rasul Ya ayuha ladhina amanu taqu Allah Wa tawasaw bil haq Wa tawasaw بالصبر وتواسوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالمرحمة أصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur wa alladhina kafaru awliyauhum al-taghut yukhrijunahum min al-nur ila al-dhulumat Love for each other The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the strangers they have love for each other so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in one of the hadith al-Qudasi, أَيْنَ الْمُتَحَابُونَ بِجَلَالِ الْيَوْمَ أُذِلُّهُمْ لَا ذِلَّ إِلَّا ذِلِّي Who are those who love each other for my sake? This day, I will give them shade. On a day, there will be no shade except my shade. O oh, Muslim brothers and sisters, you and I, we should want to be strangers. We should want to be a part of the return of the strangers. And we should realize that no matter what the non-Muslims do, no matter what they try to do to blow out and extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing with their mouths meaning their television, their cinema, their newspapers, their books, their radio, whatever they do against Islam, the lies, the distortion, the misconception, whatever they do to try to wipe out Islam, 
they will never wipe Islam out because Allah يُتِمُّ النُّورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah will perfect his light and he will perfect it through the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you and I of the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give our sons and daughters love for the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our sons and daughters who have taken off their clothes and out in the jahiliya world who are selling drugs, who are in the clubs, who have went astray, we ask Allah they will come back to become strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muslims who is in this masjid this, e this evening, the men who are here in this masjid, that they will come back to this masjid, not tomorrow evening, but in the morning for the Fajr prayer, so they can pray with the strangers. Because when the Muslims in Palestine, when the Muslims in Afghanistan, when the Muslims in Somalia, when the Muslims in Shishan, when the Muslims in Egypt, when the Muslims in Morocco, when the Muslims in Algeria, when the Muslims wherever they are, when they come out and begin to pray in the masjid as strangers, then Allah will give their earth back to them, their ird back to them, their kuwa back to them, because Islam then will be back. But you should not ask for the reward of the strangers if you're not acting like the strangers. And as long as the kuffar whom you associate with on your jobs, in your neighborhood, as long as they like you so much, you should think about it how they like you so much. O Muslims, one of the most powerful things Allah gave to the strangers that made us Muslim, the most powerful thing Allah gave to those strangers is the issue of da'wah. Da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I, we have the power in our mouths. We have the power in our chests. We have the power in our minds. We have more power than any other bomb in the world. Yes, the kuffar, they have the neutron bomb. They have the hydrogen bomb. They have the atom bomb. They got this bomb and that bomb and they will blow up everything on the earth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not given them a bomb that will allow the hearts to explode. But Allah gave that bomb to us. The bomb that Allah gave to us is the D-bomb. The Dawa bomb. It is the bomb that doesn't blow up any buildings. It is the bomb that doesn't break any bones. It is the bomb that doesn't harm anyone. It is the bomb that penetrates minds and hearts and causes people to explode inside and become strangers. You and I carry the bomb with us every day. But we're talking about some other bomb. We are reacting to some other bomb because we are fearing someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the izza is for him man tasha'u yu'izzu man tasha'u wa yudhillu man tasha'u it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala O Muslims make dua ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come back to the deen and your respect will come back to you come back to the deen and all your power will come back to you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will answer you teach your children about the strangers and you yourself learn about the strangers wa aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ya allah ghafur rahim bi rahmatik ya arham rahimin rabbi na atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab nar ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيئنا من أمرنا رشدا 
ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفرنا ذنوبنا وقينا ذاب نار ربنا آمنا فاغفرنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا الله غفور رحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا الله غفور رحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله 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 سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله